Right, and it's needed in life. Exactly. That aspect is needed in life. Exactly. Uh, are you having fun doing this? Are you? Ah, what's man. the response from the kids? I'm having the time of my life. For me, recently, I've seen it in my in the children we caught. I have seen it where someone says, "You know, I tried this; it failed. I'm trying again." You see, something happened and didn't go well, but I am a solution thinker, so I'm going to find out a solution. Right. Or recently, we were at a workshop and they were giving us water every day. And there were so many empty bottles. Yeah. Of <laughs> every evening there would be like three boxes they were going to dump. Yeah. And I was so unsettled by that until I said, you know what, guys, give me those bottles. Our our, our champions will do something with it. Yeah. My mind couldn't just. Li- I felt like there's a solution. There's something yeah. can use these bottles for. Yeah. I love flowers so much. When I go for functions. And I see fly, flowers dr- being dumped, dumped after, away, the, yeah, after the function. I feel pain. Yeah. I feel like there's so much we can do. So that mindset, I've seen it. I've actually adopted it from the children. Yeah. Because they keep saying, but there's something I can do with this thing. There's something. Yeah. Mm. There's one thing I can never forget. There's this P7 liver we are coaching. And she had a lot of things to do in the day. And I wasn't telling her to do them. And so she said, you know, I've realized... I realized that I need to, I need more time during day. So instead of waking up at at seven, the time I was work, waking up, I'm going to always wake up at 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 five thirty. Mm. No, she was waking up at eight and said, "I'm going to always wake up at six thirty, so that I have these two hours before." Mm. Nobody, absolutely nobody, told her wake up at six thirty. Mm. Or no, the parent didn't tell her wake up at this. Mm. That self initiative and self responsibility right. awesome. for me, that was amazing. Awesome. I do believe that uh, conversations are important for us as human beings because it is out of these conversations that we get to understand the reasons behind the things that we do. We also get to be inspired and to be motivated. We learn stories about one another and we can be able to pull together because we are talking, because we are conversing. And that's why in this episode today, I had the privilege to sit down with one of the most exciting person in this country. She's been interviewed over and over again over the past one month, appearing on TV nearly four times. And uh, she's passionate about education. I'm talking none other than Shamim Nirere, who is a transformational educator. 21st century learning consultant and children's personal development coach. She's also the founder and a team lead at Isera Education, which is a social enterprise focused on transformation and quality of education in Africa and the world so that children can thrive in their future despite the disruptions. And I know she's working on a new book, which is uh, coming up in the next uh, several weeks. But she's also an author of a Solution Thinkers Workbook aimed at challenging children 10 years and above to be critical thinkers, communicators, and problem solvers of the world that is waiting to see them she graduated from Makerere University with a Bachelor of Arts degree in education and a certificate in guidance and counseling. She's an incredible human being. And today we had a privilege to host her on a live signatures show just to find out what is she passionate about, what her purpose is, what keeps her going, what makes her tick. This interview is coming up shortly. Welcome to the Life Signatures Podcast with Lawrence Namale. Lawrence is a life coach, author, and keynote speaker who loves to tackle different topics on purpose, productivity, and resilience. His mission in life is to awaken all your boundless possibilities available in you. Life Signatures Podcast is dedicated to bring to reality every single person who knows that deep down in their gut, there's got to be more to life than this. And now, here is your host, Lawrence Namale.
All right, so I'm here with uh, none other than Nilele. Is it Nilele or Nirere? It's Nirere. Nirere. Yes. From Izere Education. Mm-hmm. And uh, today we're going to have a very nice chat. I'm looking forward to this. How are you doing? <sighs> I'm so honored to be here, hosted by Life Signatures <laughs> podcast. I've been a fan and I've listened to Life Signatures for so many years, like two. Right. Yeah, and uh, I'm so honored. And my my honor is actually mine because uh, it's been quite a while for me doing Life Signatures podcasting and uh, more, for the most part, I've not been interviewing people. Yeah. So I've just been one-man show. For over 800 episodes. Over 800 have, episodes, yeah. How can you have so much to talk about a single topic like the same thing, like purpose? productivity and resilience i think that's that's genius stuff it is not necessarily <laughs> genius legendary stuff. It, it's the same thing that we're going to talk about you the things that you talk about kids if someone gave you a platform today the thing that you'll be talking about is education yeah. for children and yeah. so on and so that that that, that is, is basically more or less the same thing so for me papa's productivity resilience is maybe the thing that i've decided to delve into and to have an interest in and there is a passion behind it yeah. i don't think you do what you do without passion do you no no, no. it's passion yeah and uh would you balance that passion with money sometimes yes sometimes no what is the ideal situation the ideal situation is uh if we could do purpose but then at the end of the day it is able to take care of you financially yeah. i mean you it's there's return on your time and investment. Yeah. Even though you're doing things that set your your heart on fire, things that you love. Yeah. At the end of the day, it's supposed to it's supposed to really balance. Mm. Yeah, financially, because at the end of the day, you really need, money runs the world. You need yeah. transport. You need a lot of things. You need you need money. You need to build a team. You need to scale. You need to de- drive your impact and um, this. This really comes at a cost. Yeah. Yeah. And so, have you found yourself trying to balance, in other words, trying to do stuff that are not necessarily related to Izere education so that you can get some money? Um, hmm. Currently or before? All the time, since you started. <laughs> I tried it once. Okay, for, for background check is... Uh, I quit a job. I really quit something to start this. Mm. So... Did you uh, like save some money or had no, money no, no. on the side? <laughs> no, I hadn't saved any money. So I, I, I just, um, you know this saying which is common these days of if I die, I die. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It wasn't the mindset of if I die, I die. But maybe I was a little bit naive because yeah. I was really young. And um, How I, old were you at that time? Uh, maybe 20... Let me see, let me see. I, I just made 30 in 2021 mm-hmm. and I started 20, 2016. Mm. So I don't know, it's like five years ago, mm. like 24, Okay. something, yeah. I didn't have any money saved up. Yeah. I guess I didn't think it would be really this hard. Yeah. It, <laughs> man, if I had the wisdom that I have today, if I had it five years ago, yeah. I would still have done Israel work, but I would have done it alongside okay. what I was doing. Mm. Uh, after that, I've tried to do some something. I've tried to do things related to the work. Mm. In the areas of empowerment, people development, I have done work in that space, mm. and I'm comfortable with it. I can do it as gig work alongside the zero work. Mm. Uh, I have tried to do a real, real job, mm. where like you seven, eight to, eight to, to five, nine. and you're doing yeah, completely something different, yeah. and it hasn't worked. Um, okay. I did it three months in, I was like, nah, okay. I'm not doing this, because I wasn't really being productive, mm. and I knew I could do better. Okay. Just take us back, you know, who is Shamim Nireri? You yeah. know, you, you've you already realized that you're 30, yeah. 30 years old. And uh, who are you? Just give us a bit of your background. You know, where do you come from? Your parents, your siblings and stuff that has probably shaped you to who you are up to today. Okay. Uh, not, nothing really of extraordinary i am uh, the fifth born in uh, in the family of seven mm. for over eight years i was a uh, last born so <laughs> i have some last born tendencies 
<laughs> yeah, but uh, I am. I come from a family of uh, four girls and three boys. Mm. We. I come from Kanungu district. I talk right. about it a lot. What's the name of your village? My village is Chihi. <laughs> okay. Chihi, okay, it's not. Uh, it's a town council. Yeah. But my village, Guriyo village, is um, it's called Bambilo. Bambilo. Yes. Okay. Um, if if anyone has been to Chihihi and they've gone to like Savannah Resort Hotel, mm. there's an air strip. Like we are really neighbors with Savannah. So they, they, your village <coughs> has an air strip. Yes. Actually, you can get a, a link from Entebbe to my village, like Rio Mai, like two steps away from my home. Wow. Yeah, it is. Uh, so, so it's not necessarily like primitive, remote and so it on. It is really remote. We have the worst roads. Yeah. Uh, but they are constructing some roads. Mm-hmm. But the, because we are in a tourism hub, mm-hmm. like we are sandwiched between Bwindi, there's Bwindi on our, no, on, on our north and Queen Elizabeth, I am neighbors with Queen Elizabeth to the fact that sometimes in early, when I was younger in primary, uh, lions used to to come from Elizabeth and come to eat cows Whoa. in our neighborhoods. Yes, so we would keep watch over the lions. But how night. would you watch over <laughs> lions? Let me tell you. <laughs> Let me tell you how we do that. So, we, the, the, um, the, there would be uh, a signal from the village that you know we have uh, we have we are attacked by lions, and then they would drum. Apparently, lions fear noise, mm. so they would drum. Everybody, you would drum from inside your house, but you keep drumming, mm. so so that that village is protected that night. Then the next day, you would be encouraged to light fire mm. in the kraals. So, would light fire in the kraals. For like two weeks. During the night? Yes. So okay. lions couldn't <clears throat> come to the crowds. But still, even right now, like uh, in some of the villages in my in my area, wild animals really attack them. Like wild pigs come mm. and eat crops, elephants. So people keep watch. Mm. They go out there in their gardens to keep watch of the elephants. It's mm. like we... <laughs> like it's in the neighborhood. So it's a tourism hub. Mm-hmm. And... Um, so and that Savannah Hotel is like almost like a three star or almost five star, mm. maybe three star. So so tourists flying. So mm. we are sandwiched between Queen Elizabeth, between Bwindi, and uh, and then Kasese Mount Wenzoli. So like they, they needed to be good decent transportation for people who can't mm. go on that eight hour. Thing. Yeah, so that's mm. that's the village I come from. Did you grow like all your all your years in that village? Yeah. Okay. I, I we went to the primary school over there. Yes, it was the best primary school, private. Yeah. Unfortunately, the it's in a bad state currently, but I went to school there. Uh, but when I was twelve years, I moved to Kampala. Okay. What necessitated the move? I was going for secondary school, so from right. secondary I was in Kampala all the time. Okay. And um, but before that, I um, that's the village I come from. We are basically in a peasant family, mm. agriculture and and farming. Mm. I as a teenager, I <laughs> mm-hmm. I, I used to go to graze cows. Mm. I remember there's a time every time it rains, I remember something. There's a time I was grazing cows in my senior for vacation. Mm. I had come from Kampala and go, gone home, and the rain hit me from nine <laughs> nine a.m. in the morning up to three p.m. Mm. And when I reached home, I was I, I was hoping my mother would welcome me with a you know like you're such a hero. You yeah. brought the rain. She beat me. <laughs> Why? <laughs> like, why couldn't you take shelter? Or oh, why couldn't you bring the cows back? Yeah. <laughs> but you see, even the bringing rain? the cows back, you still be bitten by the rain. Yeah, but she thought, how would you be in the rain for all these hours? What she if cares you fall sick? You. Yeah, yeah so that's it. I, it was a typical village life, but um, my, my father was educated. Mm. My, my father died when he was a professor. How old were you when he passed away? I was in P6. Whoa. Um, I was 10, maybe. Because I finished P7 when I was 11. I was in secondary when I was 12. Whoa. I think I was 10. Okay. Yeah. So I, I know it's, an, it's a very obvious question, but and maybe an unfair question to ask. Mm. If daddy was around today, mm. how, think, how do you think things would have been? I wouldn't be grassing. That's number one. What is grassing for my audience? Grassing is uh, broke. 
Yeah. I that would have financed struggling. Yeah, he would have financed all the work we are doing because yeah. he really the few years I we we had him he used to empower us financially. For example, every time we'd come for holidays in December, mm. he would bring a lot of things, mm. but anything like he would encourage us, he would pay us money for things. Mm. He would wash his car, he would he would pay money for that. If you do an activity at home, he would pay money for that. Mm. If they would eat your chicken, for example, I'm from a farmer f- uh, family. Mm. We had chicken, goats, cows. If they would the family would eat your animal mm. or give it away mm. as a present, they would daddy would, would pay for recom- that. Recompense. Yeah, so he he was big on money. He he had money, he loved to spoil us, he would come and take us for cinema even in the village. So if he was around, oh my goodness, I don't know. Maybe I, would even, I wouldn't be in Uganda. Maybe mm. um, you'll be where he will be. No, I think he was so big on education, and he most of his higher education was out of Africa. Oh yeah, so you would have gone to the states or Probably, England, and I, I think which would it, would you have preferred? No, we would have gone to Asia because he started from Asia. Yeah, yeah, he started from Asia and. But he was um, was he was he was a great man. You miss him, obviously. Uh, of course, well, I do. But he was six years of age, so probably you remember him. No, right? I was ten by the time. You were ten, I so you you remember him quite a bit, right? Yeah, but still, he he went for further education most of the time mm. when we were children. Mm. There's a time I didn't see him until I was six, actually, from the time I was born. Whoa! Because actually, my other my other name, my first name, I changed my name in primary yeah. towards primary seven. My name is Uwase. My other, my real name, my birth name is Uwase. So what were your two birth names? Uwase, Shamim. Okay. So, Uwase, so Shamim was from from birth. Yeah, Shamim mm. is the Islamic name. Uwase is uh, is is a Kinyarwanda name that is named. It means for the dad like it's mm, for the dad mm. if if i say this child is uwase is is for the dad mm. so my dad i hear my dad was not around so they they they, they named me uwase mm. one because i looked really like him mm. and because they went they waited for him to name me whenever he comes mm. <laughs> so i was uwase all that time mm-hmm. and um he came i think by the, t- the first time i saw him was like six years he mm. brought so many clothes which didn't fit me because he he you know <laughs> i i was born i think i was born on his graduation i don't remember but i see my photos in his graduation one as a baby and then he flew out for a master's immediately mm. uh, i don't for further studies and he didn't come back until i was really big mm. and he brought clothes which were not fitting at all because in his mind i was still a baby mm. and when he came i was really six years old and bigger mm. okay we'll come back if you're like me, you've probably at one point in time in your life desired to know the reason for your existence, wanted to know why on earth am I here, what am I doing here. Probably you're going through a tough situation in life or maybe you had just acquired something that you thought would help you have fulfillment in life and it wasn't, it was fleeting. And you started asking why am I here on earth? And I'm here to tell you, you are here on earth for a reason and for a purpose. But I guess the biggest question probably is this. What is my purpose? And that's why I created a course that is going to help you to discover, to own, and to deploy your purpose. After 10 years of curating material and writing books about this and actually coaching people through this in various forums, the course is available on lifesignatures.life at only $129. In that course, you'll go through eight steps that will guide you through the way where you will do this once and for all. You will not have to take this course ever again because it will give you a foundation upon which the rest of your life can run. And I can tell you this, your purpose and your intelligence of your purpose, meaning your awareness of who you are, what you can do, what you are meant to do, is much more valuable than any other kind of information or any intelligence you can have in this life. It is much more potent. And therefore, if you are interested in discovering, owning and deploying your purpose, 
head over there to lifesignatures.life and I will see you there. Yeah, so we're back with uh, Shamim Nirere. I hope I'm pronouncing it right. Yeah. The founder of uh, Izere Education. You're telling us about Daddy, that if Daddy was around, things would have been a yeah. bit different. W- w- what is that one thing that you perceive that Daddy left with you? You know, uh, maybe some value that he taught or something you observed in him that maybe you appreciate today? Um, Daddy was... Uh he went first of all he went back to school when he had a family uh, he valued education so much mm. and he always reminded us i don't know cons- cons- uh, co- coincidentally mm. i have i i have his will the will he left mm-hmm. and my, okay my mother gave it to me like keep it and i'm among the last bonds i don't know how that happened mm-hmm. <laughs> but i keep it so safe and um, it's a few pages he he wrote that will when he you, there's a time in Uganda where it was really there was a lot of insecurity mm. and he was studying from Bale IU IU mm. and he would cross over very many districts from Kanung like we are in the deep southwest south mm. southwest mm. to the far east in Bale mm. so I hear many people would die along the way and they would never see them passing mm. through I think Mavila mm. and all that. Was it during the upheaval, the time of upheavals in, in think, Uganda? I think so. I yeah. really think so. Mm. So he wrote that will because he said just in case he dies and he, uh, on the in the transit, mm. he would have communicated like an educated person mm. because some people, in his words, he said because many people die without speaking and he was speaking. He was mm. in third year at mm. university. Mm. And there's one quote that really made sense to me recently, like in my old age, where he said, he said, whoever would want to help him, uh, he, sh- he should, uh, if he ever dies, whoever would want to help him would, should just educate his children mm. and give them good education because... He, he father said, because I believe that if you give a child good quality education, that's enough. Mm. For me, that was really profound. And mother, mom really did that. Because mm. dad really died abruptly and died young. Mm. And died at a time when, when things were really stabilizing. He and was the studying. time you needed him. Yeah. He was studying most of the time. And when he was settled and uh, things getting back together, he passed on. But mom did really a good job to educate mm. us. So mm-hmm. later it made sense for me that uh, with, if you give a child good quality education, that's enough. So mm. dad was big on education and good quality education. Mm. So that has really stuck with me. That has really, for some reason, stuck with me. So you performed very well and you went to campus. To the education. Okay. Um, was that your first choice? Yes, it was my only choice, actually. Why? <laughs> so like I because you know you know the reason I'm asking this mm. I don't know if it's true but for the most part you 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 don't hear people being proud yeah. of taking a degree in education, in education. Ma- many guys in fact they want to hide especially guys who get uh, government sponsorship and the only thing that they can be given to do is education they are not proud of uh, the idea that education is uh, what they supp- what they have been given to do in, in, in university. Yeah. But here you are. That's your pride. Why is that? Okay. So first of all, government dumps uh, smart kids in education who are in government, yet they don't want it. That's really bad. Yeah, but it's a fact. It is. Yeah, it is. It is big time. Why um, is there a reason behind that? Yeah. I don't know if is it's it the reason. Economic. But it is economic because education was a bit. It's uh, cheaper. It's cheaper. Mm. It's really cheaper. So I think government would rather spend less money mm. on the government students than the 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 other courses which are costly. Mm. Which is really bad. Mm. So for my case, uh, I was a smart student throughout school. Mm. Extremely smart. I can't say I, uh, I, I wasn't, uh, I didn't get 20, 25 in 25 like it was then, mm. that I went directly to government sponsorship. I was a, pro- a privately sponsored student, mm. but I could have gone to maybe law school or business. Mm. But 
um in senior three when i was I mean you had the ability to do law yeah yeah i could have even repeated even if i hadn't performed well as in for you go, you you had so the grades to go to go to law school yeah but when i was 15 mm-hmm. i like i i keep sharing the story i was helping a young child very young to mm-hmm. do like a simple question mm-hmm. in holidays mm-hmm. and i gave them the answer and they said no this is not the right answer and it was the right answer mm-hmm. and the child said you know what shamim don't worry i'll ask my teacher tomorrow mm-hmm. so then and then it, it it occurred to me that really teachers are so smart like mm-hmm. this child was not believing what i told them mm. and they thought they would get the right answer from the teacher mm. and i as a senior three form three child a student i also looked up to the teacher mm. even people in university always looked up to the teacher mm. so then and then i wanted to be a teacher it 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 for me it hit me i wanted to be a teacher and that time i was really passionate about reading mm. uh legal thrillers so mm. i loved I loved the law. I thought it was so sophisticated and fancy and mm. all that. Mm. So, I, so you read the John Grisham's of this world? Yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> the, those books, you read John Grisham's books and you feel like you're the best lawyer. Yeah, you want to the be. The world is missing. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, so I So even regardless of all that stuff you are probably passionate about law and so on but you decide it's education you want. Yeah, I wanted education. I didn't even want to go to business school. I I so I applied for the only course I could and I just chose Makerere University and only education. Mm. And uh, education the minute you apply you get and it. This is a tip. Mm. If you don't want education, don't put it on your application mm. because they will give you that even mm. if it's the last choice. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> now, now you can match me what the it as the only choice. Mm-hmm. Definitely I got in and as excited to be mm. a teacher. Yeah. So you take your four year is it four three year years, three years? Three years. Right? And yeah. you're doing what you love all along there's no I, point yeah. in time that you regretted I should have taken another course. I you regret when you're doing education because it's it is one of the heaviest courses at university. Yeah. Where other people are doing four course units a, a semester you're doing eight. Wow. It is that intense, actually. Whoa. And I was doing languages, and I remember people keep asking, "What do people study? English, In education. English yeah. at university? Yeah. Man, syntax, semantics. Yeah. What? What? That was like the hardest thing I have ever studied. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so education was heavy. Um, mm. for the for my life at university, I had a lot of baggage. Yeah. I so definitely sometimes you'd ask yourself is this really what it was so heavy education mm. was so heavy it had mm. a, it was so demanding as paying my own tuition so I was working half the whole day and studying in the evening yeah 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 that is not there so you have yeah. to supplement yourself and at one point I reached and said but did I come to university to get grades or to just get a paper mm. and like most of us I was at university to really go through the system <laughs> So I I I I wasn't performing so well mm. but I knew I could do better. Yeah. There's one specific incident I can't forget. I used to be a bad performer at university surprisingly. Yeah. Because I really had baggage. Mhm. I I was I was not in class half the time. Yeah. And I, my mind was completely off. <laughs> so Were you one, frustrated? I had a lot of baggage. Yeah. You know like a 19 year old trying to make ends meet. Yeah. Uh That's when you miss daddy. I didn't. I was used to that. Yeah. We, we had gone through us. I think university was really a, a walk in the park for me. Yeah. Compared to what we had gone through. Oh. Yeah. Okay. But one time, there's a time I, I, the literature paper, I got 80 and 80 in, in both papers. And mm. the best who always was the best in class had gotten like 60 or less wow. than, actually less than 60. Right. So... They thought they were like I got the paper and everybody was like it's not possible Shami can't have 88 yeah. yeah for me I just kept quiet I wasn't proving your point because yeah. I knew you my, knew yourself people were like they were shocked how can you have this mark but I knew I was smart yeah 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 I was really smart I if get. I had concentrated I would have gotten uh, better I'm sure you're still smart aren't you I am yeah I am but uh university so university is a whole Think. like some of us really 
you have esteem issues you know mm. you're from a, a, a low cost school yeah, in yeah, a yeah. district that is is popular for burning people yeah 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 <laughs> i remember Hanungu, mm. and you're in class with students from these uh, cream de la cream schools in mm. kampala mm. so you don't try to 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 create space for yourself in the mm. class you you go back you and, you retreat basically you retreat, from exactly. life you you you, you don't want to be seen that's what you want I to did. be hard that's really what i did Whoa. For so for three years, years. Yeah. okay right cool so probably you you got some a bit of resilience but you know i'm learning that you got resilience even before you got into university after daddy passed away that uh, you really life showed you some stuff and you built yourself up yeah but also uh, my mother is a strong woman yeah. i've seen her resilient or like like most african women you yeah. know you, you know the story yeah we we learn a lot from them yeah but then also from from the district where i come from mm. okay so kanungo has something about it it is popular for the incident the situated incident where people died mm, the cult So for most of the time we have been shamed people from Kanungu like mm. because of that incident so in my secondary because I was in Kampala mm. like I said we are always bullied mm. big time big mm. big time like you are bullied for coming from Kanungu and all that mm. yeah so you learn that such things uh, teach you to just keep quiet retreat and and not not belong in the spaces you're mm. in affect yeah. your your self image your self esteem your self concept there yeah. a bit affected okay cool so now you you graduate from makere yeah how did you graduate you, you did you have to retake and all those things ah, given <laughs> you really want to hear that story <laughs> let's not go there okay the time half the class got retakes right in our final year final semester the education well, class no English class. English class, okay. Where we couldn't actually retake. How we got out of that, I don't want to discuss it. Okay. But uh, we graduated. But you see, when you say you don't want to discuss it, people are going to put a question mark on it Nerere. <laughs> and people are going to leave no, it to no, their own we imagination. Didn't, we, we didn't, uh, we figured out, we eventually figured it out and we graduated because it was not only me. Yeah. <laughs> it was half the class. Yeah. It was half the class. But man, Makere those times. Mm-hmm. Eh? you lose your marks you look for marks you do this mm-hmm. that's i hope i hope as an institution we can organize our things mm. so um the graduation was okay i graduated uh on a day like a monday and i had interviews in for my job on like a thursday in another country wow so i can say i was grassing throughout university so bad mm-hmm. but immediately after inv- after that graduation actually got a good job an expatriate job as 23 years i didn't know what to do with the money <laughs> a lot of money it wasn't a lot it was a bit a lot. when i look at it it was no more money but then for a 23 for me, year old for me a 23 year old who has struggled all her life yeah. without money who hasn't really held real money that this is man Yeah. It was real money. So now this job was it anything to do with the the courses that you took? Yeah, yeah, it was in the education space where right. we are doing a teacher training. Mm. So we are going to support teachers mm. to transition in their in their teaching. Mm-hmm. And they had chosen teachers from Uganda because our, our by the way education was good. Very It's good. just starting to get yeah. to Drindo, uh. but we are considered a very great human resource. Yeah. So I got an opportunity. I went in a new country. I was young, I was vibrant, I was man, I, was, I had the time of my life yeah. to the three. I was doing a great job. I was so passionate about. Actually that job is the job that built so much of the passion I'm, I'm in right now. Mm. Because I was working with low cost schools, mm. public schools which are low income in the countryside. Mm-hmm. And I would see the challenges these children have and these are same challenges we have in Uganda so mm. eventually it it exposed me to the, the the challenges sub-saharan Africa has or even Africa really children in Africa schools have they are almost the same mm. whether you go to Kenya whether you go to Rwanda whether you go to Uganda mm. Tanzania in the low cost communities mm. it's the same it's high numbers in class poverty mm. and motivated teachers mm. uh, the teachers are also poor yes and underpaid and they are 
most of them of course they are underpaid uh, they are not happy most of them are there not because they love teaching mm. and they are overwhelmed others are really passionate but their their hands are tied they can't do much mm. the numbers are overwhelming the it's there are lots of problems in our education mm. so i served for two years for close to two years mm-hmm. then i challenged myself i joined media just to prove to myself that i could write actually mm. I was in media for eight months. Mm-hmm. It, it was a challenging. The landscape. first job was how many? How many years? It was almost. It was like sixteen, like eighteen months. Two years. Almost. Almost two years. Yeah. Yeah. So media was eight months, and I was a features writer. A features writer, like you don't report news. Mm. You you write stories, feature stories. You sit down and actually create stories, mm. research, follow up. It was good. Mm. Ah, media time. It uh, it it was a learning curve mm. for me. It was mm. really a learning curve. Mm. And eventually, I left that place and came back to Uganda. Yeah. So now we're talking about Izere education. Yeah. If let me ask you this: If you were to go back, you know, mm. maybe set a reset button for your life, mm. would you still end up with Izere education? Ah, yeah, yeah. I would. I yeah. would. I would. And actually, I would have done it a bit earlier. Mm-hmm. Maybe not as a on a grand scale of saying full time I'm doing is there I would have done it mm-hmm. even when I was still maybe at university mm-hmm. maybe in the small time we have holidays you go and do some work I would have started early mm-hmm. because the more you start something the more it gets better you refine it more you like you grow yeah we grow with our our businesses our ideas so the earlier you start with your passion yeah the better the better you grow with your idea okay so what is izere all about at the end of the day what is izere education all about okay so first of all it's begun as bridge we had bridge it was bridge called what? bridge educate right in 2016 but yeah. then there was uh the bridge schools which had issues with government then So when we went to to introduce ourselves in the Ministry of Education, the first uh, they would say, "You're the Bridge Schools the people." You're the ah. After all, I dropped the idea of Bridge because I didn't want to seem like we we copied the name. Yeah. So I rebranded it to Zero Education. Zero Education. Zero Education is about quality education in the 21st century, mm-hmm. giving children of Uganda an opportunity to quality mm. education mm. in today's world what does that mean it means we are looking at the education that children are receiving mm-hmm. we are seeing what they are not receiving yet mm-hmm. they need it for this uh, day and age and mm. we are offering that mm. so we offer skills development and personal development for children in the areas of knowledge skills mm. uh, character development mm. and the mindset mm. uh, so quickly if i can explain the knowledge is um today's children what other knowledge apart from what they study in class the mm-hmm. traditional uh, subjects apart from that what else do they need mm-hmm. they need knowledge about the global trends they mm-hmm. need to know about the global themes they need to know about sdgs they need to know about their world mm-hmm. they need to know about digital literacy they need to know things like programming and coding mm-hmm. they need to learn about business and money and the dynamics of geopolitics wow. they need to know about their world those things are not taught in the formal traditional school They are sometimes they are taught, but in passing. In passing, really, in yeah. passing. And yet you feel that these are the things that yeah. really children need they in this need day it. and in this they age. Need. Because today's children are global citizens. They are not. They they are so in the global world. They are no longer in the confines of Uganda or Kampala. Do you feel like the kids that are coming out of the school system today are well prepared to face the world that you and I live in? Mm, I think our schools could do better. Yeah, could do better. So, apart from that, other knowledge, then they have the skills they need. They, there's a set of skills today's children need, even today's adults. Yeah, things like creativity. You must be creative mm-hmm. in the world that is so full of skills and all that. Mm-hmm. You need to be cre- a critical thinker. Mm-hmm. The world of uh, so much information, you must make sense of some of that information mm-hmm. in a short time. You must be a great communicator. Mm-hmm. There are so many people who are good, but you need to stand out with your communication. Sell yourself, brand yourself. Talk about what you know. Mm. So communication is really important. Mm. It is very important. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, uh, there is critical thinking, mm. and then problem solving and creativity. Mm. So we teach them that. 
um, in a way that we really focus on it and say so we are teaching creativity, we are teaching problem solving, mm. we are giving children opportunities to solve problems in their communities mm. through, uh, we have a program called Solution Thinkers Program, through yeah. that program. Yeah. Then we also have character development. Where so we, Solution Thinkers, um, um, my, uh, my guess is uh, to raise up children who offer solutions, right? Yes, who are As in, instead of kids sitting and waiting to be told to do something. Yeah. They can improvise, they can, can create stuff, they can offer solutions, yeah. and that is the that is the natural way in which they, they, are, they are perceived in life, right? Yeah. Okay. And, uh, so that program, ideally, even as adults, we need to be solution thinkers. Yeah. But you see, when, when something, you learn something as a child, it becomes it becomes part of you. It's like nature. It becomes mm. like second nature to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when we bring up our children from early years and they know the things they have the confidence to solve mm. problems they have the confidence to speak mm. they have the the knowledge to back that up mm. they become adults who are not going to be at university and say uh, our education system is is not preparing them for the world of work they're right. going to create their opportunities yeah then we also focus so much on uh, our solution thinkers are supposed to have character right because in today's world actually you are as good as your word, you're as good as your integrity, you're as good as... I mean, what's the X factor? Why should I give yeah. you an opportunity? Why should I, I give it to the other person? Yeah. So we are in a, in a place full of so many uh, people who are good. So and they're must... competing probably for the same thing? Yeah. So you, you have to be someone that maybe stands out? You must have an X factor. And how do we have an X factor? Is for simple things like your brand. Yeah. What do people know you for? How can we trust your word? You know, yeah. can I vote for you? Mm. Because that's where you're going to open doors and you're going to stay there. Mm. So, in uh, what brand are we building as a country? Mm. You know. So we teach things like having core values, mm. leadership, self leadership. Mm. Even as you become very good with your knowledge and your your skills are good, even your character must match that. Mm. Then we have the mindset, the growth mindset, or mm. the learning to learn, mm. believing that uh, I am a challenger. You know, you keep challenging yourself, you keep pushing yourself to do better. So our solution thinkers. They challenge themselves. They they have a growth mindset. It's something we keep reminding them. You know, mm. you don't give up. You keep trying. You keep finding options. Mm. You keep becoming a learner. Mm. Like that learning to learn. They mm. are learners. Mm. Big Throughout. time. Throughout. And Throughout. it's not learning for the sake of. Do you give these guys examinations? No. Your your, your champions. You call them champions. Yeah, they are our champions. We don't give them examinations. We don't yeah. train us. Our assessment is continuous, like it's from their projects, it's from the feedback. Yeah. If someone was crying when they tell them something is wrong mm -hmm. or they didn't play something right or they lost a game in the early years because we work with younger children mm. and you eventually find someone who losing a game and saying, it's okay, I'll try again. Mm. Maybe I'll do this. Mm -hmm. we, that is growth. That You don't need to examine that. Right. And it's needed in life. Exactly. That aspect is needed in life. Exactly. Are you having fun doing this? Are you? Ah, what's the response from the kids? I'm having the time of my life. For me recently, um, I've seen it in my in the children we caught. I have seen it where someone says, you know, I tried this, it failed, I'm trying again. You see, something happened and didn't go well, but I am a solution thinker, so I'm going to find out a solution. Right. Or recently we were at a workshop and they were giving us water every day. And there were so many empty bottles. Yeah. Of <laughs> every evening there would be like three boxes they were going to dump. Yeah. And I was so unsettled by that until I said, you know what, guys, give me those bottles. Our our, our champions will do something with it. Yeah. My mind couldn't just. Li I felt like there's a solution. There's something yeah. can use these bottles for. Yeah. I love flowers so much. When I go for functions. And I see fly, flowers dr being dumped, dumped after, away, the, yeah, after the function. I feel pain. Yeah. I feel like there's so much we can do. So that mindset, I've seen it. I've actually adopted it from the children. Yeah. Because they keep saying, but there's something I can do with this thing. There is something. Yeah. So even my children, like recycling is now part of them. This is mm. something that was like, oh, I, I think I can do this out of. Mm. And when they are watching, like watching something, cartoons, mm -hmm. they, they, they no longer watch it the way they used to watch. Mm -hmm. Because now... We would do a world tour and they, they visit countries and make research every week about a country. Mm -hmm. So someone will say, oh, they will see that it's from Quebec, Canada, and they will go to the 
to the to the globe to the map. Oh, this is this is where this is the place. Yeah. So I'll tell them the auntie. We have an auntie who is from Tololo, and they would go to the map of Uganda and say, "This is Tololo. You show us your village." <laughs> <laughs> so like it's keep it, it it makes sense, you know. Yeah. They keep adding connecting things yeah. they see with life itself the connections are visible you yeah. see that someone's making connections yeah because they have learned some things about digital literacy and being responsible online mm. you'll uh, i sense i i ask you you're the one who encouraged me to let my children watch da vinci tv yeah by the way thank you for that you're welcome so my daughter loves da vinci tv so much but there's a time I tell her you she loves it so much but she will stop watching when she sees something which is 13 years and above. Oh, uh, page PG 13, yeah. PG something. Even though it is good. Yeah. So I have seen change. Now you don't examine such things, you see it yeah. in application yeah. and children really catch up things and they are so good when they understand things they don't go over it, you mm. know. The core values I've seen children check themselves and say but. Mm. I need to do better. Mm. Giving themselves assessment. Mm. There's one thing I can never forget. There's this P7 liver we are coaching and she had a lot of things to do in the day and I wasn't telling her to do them and so she said, you know, I realized I realized that I need to, I need more time during the day. So instead of waking up at at 7, the time I was work, waking up, I'm going to always wake up at 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 5:30. Mm. No, she was waking up at 8 and said I'm going to always wake up at 6.30 so that I have these two hours before. Mm. Nobody, absolutely nobody told her wake up at 6.30 or mm. no, the parent didn't tell her wake up at this. Mm. That's self-initiative and self-responsibility right. awesome. for me. That was amazing. Awesome. So, you know, in this podcast, yeah. for the most part, I talk about purpose, productivity and resilience and you can see all these things you're talking about mm. are probably related to, to purpose. If I might, to, I might ask you, do you think mm. this is your purpose, what you're doing? I don't know really if it is my purpose. I know I'm passionate about it. Yeah. And I know that even if I had one million dollars yeah. to maybe spend, yeah. I would set up low-cost, high-quality You basically would centers. expand is there yes. education? Yes, to reach every, every child in low-income community in Uganda. So you, 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 there's something you've mentioned there, right mm. there, and I want to latch on to it. You're talking about low-income community. Yeah. Is that where your passion is? I believe that education is an enabler yeah. and education is a leveler. I wouldn't yeah. be hosted here if I didn't go to school, Lawrence. Yeah. I wouldn't. Yeah. I wouldn't. At Did all. you read that article we wrote about uh, stop bashing the education system? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I, I I did. So I believe in education. Yeah. If I, I don't go I don't buy into the idea of people who say our education system is completely dead. No. Yeah. No 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 no. Uh-huh. It's very important. Yeah. The, our education, even though it doesn't uh, it has a lot of faults but is good. Uh-huh. It helps cognitive development. Like it's heavy on material uh-huh. and that heaviness and though we are memorizing, it mm. helps us cognitive development. Like you re- yeah. your brain r- It's grows. growing, yeah. It grows your brain. Yeah. It? So our education is good. I believe in education. I believe that children in low-income communities do not have the opportunities. Mm. Let, let's take an example of COVID right now. Yeah. There are children who have never stopped studying yeah. from last year, yeah. even when schools are closed. And they're being actually promoted to exactly. other classes. Exactly, they've promoted twice. Yeah. And our, the children, the most part of the children are still where they left last time. Yeah. And it's it has affected them big time. There are not many children who are studying opportunities. They are not like doing digital literacy. Yeah. Yet today, programming and coding knowledge is as good as numeracy and literacy. Yeah. Our children need these things. Yeah. <laughs> you guy, I just feel like low-income community children don't get the quality education. They go in low income schools. So right there let me let me ask you this question. Mm. Because it's very critical. There could be someone out there who wants to basically help mm. these low income communities and the kids in those low income communities to get education. Probably mm. your kind of could I call it alternative education that you're offering. Mm. Do you have a framework yeah. that that basically it can be replicated in Kanungu, it can yeah. be replicated in Mombasa and any 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 remote area in, in Africa. Yes. How does that work? 
we have set up, for example, a low cost uh, maker space, a learning space, yeah. an innovation space for children in Kamocha. Yeah, it's not the only one we have set up. We had one in Nagulu before COVID broke yeah. down. Setting up just learning centers where children can come and socialize and interact with computers and offer just like two hours yeah. in a day for them to do like remedial reading and they have a library in communities mm-hmm. in every village. Mm-hmm. Or in a combination of villages, you have one. It works Mm. and can be manned by the young people in that community. You don't even have to get stuff from wherever. Mm. You get that community. It's like localized. Mm. You set up a learning center. So they own it. They do own it. The ones they're the ones who are running it from the same community. It's not even funded. Even the money from that community alone can fund it. Okay. Even the children, the exhibitions they do. For example, after every quarter, the art they have done. They Options, they, they can set up and can collect money which can run that project. But how does a girl like you set up something of that nature? I mean, where does it come from? It's doable. Uh, what, what? Where did the idea come from? It, I am a teacher, Lawrence, and yeah. I love education, and I know what quality education does. Yeah. So, I don't, don't you like? You know, for me, sometimes I shrink from doing stuff like that. Where do you get the guts to do this? Uh, because I'm a teacher, yeah. and I, I, it's most teachers are passionate people. Yeah, they can go an extra mile for their learners. Mm. And for me, there's a lot we can do in community. Mm. There's really a lot. Mm. Sometimes things just need leadership. Mm. You don't even have to do it. Just give people an idea. Give them the leadership. Give mm. them the power. Mm. Give them the, the 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 opportunity to own their solutions. And they so will can do this, so much. Can this make a difference it is it can. making a difference it does right it does it does even keeping the hope alive right now yeah our biggest goal right now is to keep children interested to come back next year when schools open because i promise you many children are dropping out the ones in in urban slums mm-hmm. we are, have children who are eight years nine years they can't write their name they can they can't look in the eye they have gone back to to levels that are so lower than their level of development. Mm. So uh, they come from families where parents they are, they are struggling for survival. Mm. The least the least of their worry is the quality of education that children are having, or to engage them. It's, it's they are looking for food. You can't tell me to mm. to keep them engaged. You know, mm. but then there's also a child of a person who has not stopped studying since last year, mm. and those how how are they competing? Mm. You know how 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 are they going to get the opportunities? Mm. So if we do not rise up the occasion for those children, mm. we are creating a big divide which is already there, mm. and this divide is going to come and bite us in a few years mm-hmm. because the levels of unemployment in this country are mm. so high, just like any other sub-Saharan Africa, mm. and our population is multiplying mm. just like any other sub-Saharan Africa. So I, I see that what you're doing is you're creating solution thinkers even in those uh, yeah. slum areas, in those communities, in those underprivileged communities and so on and so forth. Yeah. And in the long term, what you're doing is that these solution thinkers, instead of becoming the robbers and uh, yeah. the guys who cause insecurity and uh, the ladies who are being used and taken advantage of, they are now empowered yeah. and they're solution thinkers and they can be able to use their minds, their heads, their hearts mm. to find something and uh, convert it into something enterprising, right? That's yeah. the idea. Yeah. And uh, let me let me surprise you, let me interest you. The, the our our for example we have three three volunteers yeah. who support that community center. They're not staff of this area, they just are contractual and volunteers. We mm. just give them a small stipend. But they are young people. They are young people. One one is a self taught robotics engineer wow. who is fifteen. Now he's sixteen years. Wow. He is he is so passionate, he comes, he teaches, he's getting better. So it's like a win win. Yeah. They they are young. We give them a, a pala education training to mm-hmm. make them pala educators. They are mm-hmm. not really trained educators, but they know. Mm-hmm. They know about child protection. They know about teaching. They know about lesson plans. They know about some psychology. Some psychology. Some yes. uh, emotional intelligence. Yes, and how to build children's esteem and confidence. Wow, that's the biggest need. And so they are learning in the process. They are learning project management because yeah. that's a project they are managing. Yeah. And they're also earning some small money and wow. they are changing their community. Wow. It's a win-win. Wow. That's beautiful. So let me ask you this one. 
what is your biggest pain in this sector that you are in? What is your biggest pain? My pain is a lot. First of all, schools are closed. That's the biggest. Yeah. Why are schools closed right now? Like, yeah. why? When the whole region is open. Yeah. Yeah, but let's not go there. Mm-hmm. The second, but before the pain, let me share a win. Our yeah. biggest win was last year, the, the government introduced a new curriculum for yeah, the CBC. old level. It's beautiful. Yeah, you, lo- you looked at it? I, I have a glimpse of, of, uh, of it, yeah. but it covers the work we've been advocating for since 2016. Right. So for me, it spoke right into my heart. Yeah, you, you feel vindicated. It is beautiful. I mm. feel like I wish everybody knew what our all-level curriculum is. Mm. But then again, these things, our government has good policies. Yeah. Implementation is what fails. Okay. So my worry is that the implementation yeah. is, is going to fail us. Yeah. And is, we're not going to get the gains. So that uh, gives you some kind of pain also? Yeah. Anticipated pain. My other pain is that uh, my other pain is uh, that uh, there's a lot of, there's huge divides and education is so expensive. Mm. Better schools are costly and also the better schools which are a bit better, they are they are doing things which are really, schools are start teaching because of the sake of the marks, the grades, but I don't blame them. It's the parents who put pressure on these schools. Is it the parents or is it maybe that mm-hmm. the end of this a society also? It's, because It's the parents because a parent wants their child to be reading by the time they are five, by the time they are going to P1, but yeah. why is the rush? Yeah. The, the parents, if a child is five years, in ECD really, a child there's a lot of development for a child. It's not only about passing, you know. Mm. A child who is young, who is in the time of early child development, under eight years, really. Mm. Why are you making them, like, perform so well? Mm. It's not like they are doing PRE tomorrow. Mm. So you find a child who is uh, under four years, under three uh, three years, is already, instead of just being uh, minding the other development like the like the fine motor skills, they are teaching that child to start sounding s- sounds. Mm, mm. There's no need for doing that at that early age. Mm. They can even study that at five years or at four. Mm. So I think parents, because of the comparison, you know, my child mm. is 10 and they can do this and this. My mm. child is five and they can do this. So there's a lot of, um, I don't know what I can, I don't want to call it ignorance. I I don't want to call that. But there's, uh, there's it could a be way. some kind of culture that we've, we have. I think we, it's we a have. culture. It's a culture. Since education was introduced in Africa, you know, so uh, you, your parents want their kids to learn it's, and they want their kids to learn so that they can be able to get a job. Why? Because the parents also yeah. went through the same thing. Yeah. They got a job because they had an education and their friends who did not have education those days did not get a job. Yeah. So they so feel we like bring them maybe. Yeah. But times have changed, Lawrence. Times are changing and that's why you're doing Isere, right? Yeah. Times because have changed. You're you're equipping people for the twenty first century skills, yes. right? We are no longer even just studying for jobs. You're studying to to create something for yourself. You're studying solution to, thinker. To to know your value and apply your value and yeah. monetize your value, just yeah. like the things you teach us. Yeah. So, like you, you don't have to wait until you cleared with high school and cleared with university so that you can earn mm. as a kid. Do you have kids who are earning in, yeah. your, in your programs? It's, it's, a, it's a prerequisite. Every money we have, every month we make some money. Yeah. And they, do, they earn the money from their skills. This, just today, yeah. I, we have a, a 10-year-old who just wrote a comic book and then the other child in his in, in the same class in the same coaching session yeah. is an artist he likes likes art so they're, they're collaborating they're collaborating Whoa. he's going to draw yeah I'm it's excited. beautiful yeah so there are many stories like that yeah. we have people earning from their skills yeah and they they really realize that they can earn some money you know yeah. they can they earn from like typing work they earn from Speech moderation. So I, young hope, MCs. I hope I, I've seen you. You you gave. Uh, I bought that solution thinkers workbook for my son Ethan, and I there's uh, you you, you teach. Good. He's doing actually. He he yeah, he he comes and it. says uh, this is what I'm going to do in the solution thinkers, mm. and we pay him some money when uh, he, yes. he he does some stuff. Amazing. But I saw that you you also teach my money moment. Yeah. You, you do you teach these kids about handling money and yeah. stuff like that. Every week there's a session about money. 
and we can't just learn about money we yeah. have to make money you so you have to have it yes and and uh, you see how it really works yes. so it's not a virtual thing no. it's a real thing solution thinkers know that as they celebrate their birthdays their money should be growing yeah so let me tell you you asked me about daddy if daddy was around what what but if daddy had been okay uh, daddy was insured so we got money insurance money after he died yeah but if we had if he if we had started if say he was saving up money for each one of us yeah and maybe by the time we are 21 there's this amount of money set aside there's a huge jump that can help you in the in the in world in the world yeah and children need to learn about these things they need to buy assets yeah they need to to own things they need to learn about wealth they need to learn these things they need to value of money yeah they, there's an african proverb that says if you carry your own water you value what every drop of it yeah 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 so if they carry their own water right now we have children who are from who are studying in international schools and the culture in uganda children in international schools they come from a well well to do families yeah so these children mostly sometimes they go for higher school out of uganda yeah if they learn the value of working right now and earning money they will not suffer so much because yeah. Children in those countries actually work. Like yeah, yeah. really work. They yeah. go and wait in in restaurants. Yeah, they yeah. work, they earn money. Yeah. So the African child there's a lot they can do. Mm-hmm. And when you start showing these children from the early years that you work have is value, fun. Work is fun. Work is is creative. Creating work value. is creating value. There's a lot yeah. changes on their mindset. Yeah. Okay, cool. We're coming to a close of this uh it's been a very insightful and I know we can go on and on and on and on. Yeah. And uh even as we come to a close of this, I, I want to ask you this this question. Yeah. What has been your biggest frustration in your purpose pursuit? I consider is there a work your purpose mm-hmm. basically. If you do not know what your purpose is, I will tell you what your <laughs> purpose is. Your purpose is to raise up champions who are solution thinkers, most especially in underprivileged communities. That is the purpose for Shamim Nirere. Have you ever written that down? Man, I should write it down after <laughs> that. <laughs> you listen to this episode? Yeah. And then uh, you can write you that down. You articulated it so well. I, I think that is your purpose, really. I but, think but, so. but the question that I'm asking is what do you think has been your biggest frustration in deploying this purpose? It's because people don't get it. I have people playing okay, praying. <laughs> don't make fun of me. <laughs> <laughs> I have people Uh I have my mother wishing I can get a job. Yeah, know, yeah, 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 yeah. For the, 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 your, your folks as in <laughs> yeah, yeah. family, close people, family. People not getting what Why you do. Why don't you go and get a real job? You know. Yeah. And they are really wishing you well. Genuinely they are praying for yeah, you yeah. to get a job. Yeah. You know, but I have so much work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But you see a so job a job assures you money at the end of the month. You know that I have my four million when I'm doing this job yeah. at the end of the month. Uh, vis-a-vis doing his area work and sometimes yeah. you're in the negatives instead of having I, I've 4 million. I've been in the negatives from 2016. So sometimes that has big, been a big frustration. Yeah. Sometimes um people will say why don't you look for funding but Shamim why don't you just give up? You've been in the negatives <laughs> since 2016. Why exactly. why are you with this thing? Because and you are smart, you're intelligent, you can basically earn money elsewhere. Because Lawrence uh, this is our world, you know. If if you don't rise up the occasion to transform the community not many people are going to okay they are going to do it i'm not i'm not saying people are not doing it but you must be part of the creating the future you want to see yeah. i can't be party to people saying oh, education is bad yet i went to school to study education yeah, yeah. i am I was trained for that basically yeah even though i've gone to some institutions even where i started from and said you know guys mm. i would even want to offer this for free let me let me have a small course with the third year students who are going to teach mm. so that the teachers understand this because mm. teachers are really really big stakeholders and people will say how many years have you taught for mm. but you taught me things you trained me so i'm doing what you trained me mm. so let me do it mm. so the frustration has been there's no resources people mm. don't get it even the the policy makers who are supposed to be maybe supporting something they don't get it they 
they don't see the need for it. There is no urgency. Mm. People will say, you know, we need to plan for the country. This is a project that can do maybe five years. Let's give it ten years. We don't have ten years. We mm. don't. Mm-hmm. In this age of mm-hmm. the fourth industrial revolution where things are like skyrocketing, mm. we can't afford ten years of mm. planning. We cannot. We simply can't. We'll be left behind. We're already behind. So yeah. we, this is an opportunity. The, in technology has brought an opportunity that you can leapfrog challenges. You can go ahead ten years of your time. Yeah. Like right now, yeah. COVID has given us like ten years of our time. Yeah. Our children are doing PowerPoints. Yeah. You know, university students. You, you teach your, your kids your champions PowerPoint. They, they, they present do presentations. On Zoom. Yes. Wow. But uh, something that maybe might not have happened if COVID last, didn't come. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Two years ago, before COVID, honestly, yeah. you would be lucky to find a first year student from a low income society. Yeah. Uh, school knowing what PowerPoint is. Yeah. But now everybody knows that, so yeah. we have leapfrogged that. Yeah. So we. So, uh, this low income communities i know you've said that one of the things that you guys you need is resources do you mm. envisage that maybe you need computers mm. what else do you need in terms of we need, resources we need, we need computers we need uh, books for example for children to read we need uh, uh, supplies we do a lot of creative work so we need a yeah. lot of art supplies we need a lot of uh, uh, these tinkering things soldering yeah. Uh, things and um, leads, things that can give children opportunity to create. We need furniture, things, a decent environment for also them. Also, you need the spaces. We need spaces, but spaces is not a problem. There are spaces in communities, churches, mm-hmm. uh, schools. There are spaces in communities. Mm-hmm. We don't need to have own space. We don't mm. own space. So, one of your brilliant ideas is that instead of spending a lot of money trying to build brick and mortar, you use whatever is already available in the community. Yeah. And therefore, you rope in the community, they mm-hmm. own the projects and so mm-hmm. on, and yeah. you oversee. We offer leadership really and resources. We give them materials. We train because we want to keep standards. Yeah. It's not just any shoddy thing. And uh, our budget is really less than $100 every month for that. And the, the activities they do, the exhibitions, they can create things that can be sold, mm. and that money can be gotten. Your dream, your biggest dream, if you to close your eyes and mm-hmm. you, you see Izere, you know, I'm not talking about you having money, but I'm talking mm-hmm. about you seeing transformation in the community. W- what do you see if you're to look at the whole of can, the whole of Uganda? I would want to see uh, a reformed education. I would want to see teachers who are empowered, who are valued, mm-hmm. not looked down, uh, down mm-hmm. on. I would want to see... A government which seems to care about education and which seems to care about the quality of learning that Mm. is happening. And communities empowered and power back to parents to Mm. know that, you know, we need to invest in money, Mm. not waiting on government to do everything. The government is doing enough. Parents need to raise up the occasion. If Izera is a name, a Mm. household name in Uganda, how, how is it set up? That's, you know, if you are to look at it from that angle, everyone knows about Izere education how is it set up how is it felt on the ground so for me the idea would be you don't even have to come to Israel to learn for your child to have the things yeah i would want the whole thing you, you to have the whole academy at your home to have that maker space in your house to have mm. a classroom to have the maker space or the classroom to have all these act- these skills in their classroom there mm. in communities Children who go to Sunday school, I would want Sunday school to have just 30 minutes of engaging mm. children. They can create projects about the Bible and all that. Mm. And I know it's possible. So mm. for me, the, the dream is, can we all understand the need for mm. transformed education and can we deliver it in our simple ways? If there's communication, you don't need to enroll in a public speaking school mm. to, for, to develop the child's communication, mm. even though it is important for them. You can't speak with them. Look them in the eye and ask them, how was your day? Mm. Then listen to them. Mm. Listen like you mean it. Mm. And give them correction. Yes. Where, where, where you feel they're not maybe having eye contact yes. and stuff. They're not standing well give and so feedback. on. Give them feedback. You give them ni- that nice feedback but, and then they but try. But it means for you to achieve that, you must also be a learner. In this 21st century, we're so all learning. you are actually calling the whole community the to be educators totally. at the end of the day. Totally. Yeah. Totally. So now that we probably maybe are not so conscious about that, is it okay for me to say that the work of Israeli education is also to bring consciousness to the, to parents, the, communities, to the communities, to the parents, to yeah. the to, to the leaders in the community yeah. that uh, this is needed? Yeah. 
And, and, and for that to happen, probably the communities will also need the presence of Isere. Maybe Isere coordinators in every, whatever, if it's yeah. a village, if it's a district and so on and Our so forth. Our dream is to have an Isere educator in every village. In, in every the village. Deepest village. In the Across deepest the country. village of Uganda. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. the dream. Awesome stuff. So give me the definition of this Isere coordinator in the village. How are they equipped? Uh, these are... Uh, young people definitely yeah they can be teachers they can be no teachers yeah people who are passionate about education and child and children. development yes. children development yeah children development they yeah. have the knowledge of early childhood development mm. they have the resources we have given them the resources the training and they are willing to go an extra mile mm. to to support that child mm. every child mm. uh, ch- children with learning uh, disabilities can they support them can they empower their parents to help them mm. can we bring back the vibe of education can we love education mm. can we enjoy it can we see the power that education has mm. that's for me the dream that's the ideal zero educator awesome. who is standard who is a global a global citizen a global thinker creative yeah just absolutely amazing educator awesome so your journey of purpose began and uh, it's continuing and uh, you're raising up these people uh, have you been frustrated by people coming people going ah, <laughs> you really had Turn to ask over. that you guys <laughs> yeah. currently i'm nursing a heartbreak from, yeah and i have put a stop at on hiring oh i'm not doing that again yeah. anymore yeah because you, you invest your soul, your very spirit in someone, and and they leave they leave you home and dry for maybe reasons that you maybe not you might not even be able to blame them, right? Yeah. Sometimes it's understandable reasons, right? Yeah, it is really frustrating. Mm. Sometimes it is frustrating. Uh, the, this these things you for you to have good people, you must have like uh, maybe money. Yeah, resources. Otherwise, uh, Really, I don't know. Young people are really good. They are hardworking. They are, they are amazing. They are mm. really amazing. Mm. Just that uh, they are also on their journey. Mm. It may be sometimes it is, it is a stalling thing. It is, mm. They don't see quick future with you and they mm. have to move and you can't bring them. Mm. Yeah, so it is, it is frustrating. So that's when the question of the million dollars comes in. If you got a million dollars, do you feel that you'll plug in all those problems? Or you will just quiz is there education and you go and you build yourself a mansion it somewhere and uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't do that mm-hmm. I would I would I would scale the work we are doing yeah I would give teachers decent gigs yeah oh my goodness I would give teachers decent gigs I would develop resources I would make them subsidized for children yeah I would do a lot for is there yeah I would spend probably the whole million in setting up a the best space low yeah. cost spaces yeah in the community and paying your coordinators well and so on so well so let me just tell you one thing that probably you've not realized mm. you've mentioned very many times on the podcast today you've mentioned one stakeholder over and over again who are the teachers yeah the current teachers so i have seen that you're also passionate about not only the kids but you're also not passionate the about the teachers who are currently uh, teaching uh, kids and so on and so forth. Well, well, well. It's been uh, quite a very interesting conversation with you. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. And you've been really supportive in Isaiah's work, you people. Lawrence has always been like that. Uh, that an official stakeholder in Isaiah. Yeah. We reach out to, you know what? Like especially on content development, you have given us ideas. Yeah. And for the first time, I would like to mention that uh, actually the name Solution Thinkers was suggested by Lawrence. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you so much for hearing us, for really holding our hands, for being the person, the champion that Zero needs. You're welcome. Mm-hmm. You see, for me, it was basically easy because the, the work you do is probably also the the work that i do and uh I, I probably should tell you this that long ago even before we met i had a book written down about called permission for greatness the idea of that book was to empower parents so that they can empower kids where is that book it's gathering dust somewhere <laughs> in the recycle bins <laughs> all right you've been talking about that book for years please bring it out i will I, I changed the title of the book to... To Empowered? No, Raising the Inner Game of Your Child. And I remember I, I 
<laughs> edited the book and so on and so forth and then and someone stole it. my computer oh, man. and i was just like you who lost people and you got oh, heartbroken man. i was so heartbroken i've never been able to recycle that book again uh, it's like i feel i lost a baby oh, so no. <laughs> so oh, no. I, i feel you when you're passionate about education What's the anniversary of that loss how long has it been lost? it's like i think three four years ah, Lawrence, yeah. work on that book we we i i tried to do to go back i think last <laughs> two weeks and so on i just didn't feel the vibe uh, but but it's something that we're not talking about me we're talking about you but at, at the end of the day we've come to the close of this episode i don't Thank know if you, you have any advice you'll give to anyone who is listening today and they have kids in their community and yeah i, I would like to give advice to parents and young people basically anybody Today is uh, we in the age we are in right now you don't have to go to school to learn certain things so let's stop blaming what we didn't learn yeah. and let's start being learners in our workspaces on the internet anywhere you can learn please learn and when you learn extend that knowledge to a young person near you our young people come from universities and are clueless please coach them yeah. our children in homes who are not getting enough from school please educate them it just takes five minutes a day and you're transforming someone's life yeah so let's be educators you don't right. have to be a teacher to teach all right okay ladies and gentlemen thank you so much for listening to us if you wanted to find out more about Izere Education that's the exactly what you're going to do you're going to go to Facebook right yeah and then you type in Izere Education uh-huh. and uh, also on our website izereeducation.com let's spell that is i z e r e education this so, so it's double e yeah it's double e izereeducation.com and we have an academy our academy can be accessed every day on for just as little as 5000 daily for Uganda that is 5000 Uganda shillings and you can enroll your child in any course we have we have amazing courses Lawrence yeah we have amazing courses yeah so let's we have made quality education cheap and affordable mm-hmm. because it is a uh, it is it is important all right so ladies and gentlemen educating our kids is actually helping them to create their futures yeah. and to make ah. them to be solution <laughs> think us in this world and the lady who is championing all these wonderful things is none other than Miss Izere Nirere Shamim Nirere Shamim we'll see you another time <laughs> thank you so much for being on the show bye bye thank Bye-bye. you so much you my Thank you for listening to Life Signatures Radio. If you enjoyed today's show, subscribe to Life Signatures Radio on iTunes, Stitcher, or visit our website at lifesignatures.libsyn.com. Life Signatures Radio, fresh clean and inspiring.